All right, so moving on with the preparation for the Euro trip um, today, I'm gonna strip this engine of everything I need to put on this engine. So mostly everything, to be honest. And then I'm gonna order everything for the for this engine, for this so the seals and all that stuff. And maybe I will do the coolant reroute as I am already here and it's easy to do. So yeah, uh, today is the 15th of August. <coughs> there is no much time left, about two weeks, so I better go to work. Okay, the flywheel and the clutch at the first course. The pressure plate looks like it was machined not so long ago. So maybe the previous owner did the clutch already. But yeah, as you can see there's a lot of heat inside. But the clutch worked fine, so... still some marks of the machining the crossbone but the only thing that needs to be replaced is the the pilot bushing, bushing because as you can hear Alright, so next part on the list is the exhaust manifold. I could cut it off because I will be deleting the EGR either way, but I think it's easier to just unbolt it. So that's only the water pump left on this side and the engine mount. So now it's time for the other side, the intake manifold. And in here there's bolts all the way over there. And they looked quite hard to get to. So I will start with unbolting all this thing and I think I will start with taking off the fuel rail and injectors or maybe also unbolt unbolting the top of them in the
turns out the intake side isn't that hard it's just a little bit more harder to remove uh, when you unbolt the upper part of the intake the bolts for the intake in itself are very accessible just 12 millimeters and a couple of tens over there on the throttle body and that's it actually All right, so next day and today I'm gonna try to clean all, those, all of those stuff up. As you can see, the intake manifold is covered in oil. Also the second part of the intake. I'm mainly gonna try to clean it inside, but on the outside also. And all, also the valve cover, I'm gonna un undo all the screws and clean it inside the motor mounts and later probably the engine itself all right so i bought some zmiwarto hamulców it's brake cleaner and also the engine and parts cleaner from the a2 i heard good things about it and also that spray bottle which is for garden things but i think it will do good with the with the brake cleaner it's much cheaper to buy it in the five liters bottle than the spray spray thingy so yeah it's very hot today and let's get started <clears throat> all right so i think i'm done with the cleaning it not <clears throat> it is not perfect but i'm quite happy with the results you are, you are actually able to see some aluminium inside not only the uh, gun oil gunk or whatever that was this also looks quite better The butterflies are now clean and the inside doesn't look so bad either but the best part i think is the valve cover i'm quite happy with the results there is some imperfection in the 
cast itself so I cannot clean them but the valve cover itself looks, looks quite nice comparing this to that and that was cleaned before also so yeah quite a nice result and the throttle body also I cleaned it a little bit mostly the the gunk from the butterfly yeah. and did quite a mess Alright, so I took off the uh, timing cover, the, the timing belt and everything doesn't look so bad, but I already bought a new one so I will change that in anyway. And the engine looks like it didn't have any leaks so that's, that's very good. The water, pump, the water pump moved freely. So now I think I'm gonna the engine to the to the top dead center and start removing the timing belt stuff all right so weather decided that this is a good time to start pouring rain as you can see but it's quite nice out right now because there was 34 degrees almost and now it's 24 degrees so 10 degrees less so it's quite nice to work now Crank is on the mark and uh, marks are on the mar marks are on the line. Alright, so since I'm gonna uh, install the reroute, if you own Amiata, you probably know what that is. But if you don't know, uh, so, so this particular engine, so the PP by factory, the water goes through, I don't know which side is the intake or which is the exhaust for the coolant, but here is the intake or exhaust, and here is the other port. So when the, here you look at the radiator, so when it's going through the engine, the last uh, piston and the last, and the last cylinder has the least amount of fresh and cool water, so it, it can overheat. There's a bigger issue if you have turbo, I got an engine it's gonna stay like that for a bit, but when you're racing uh, on the track and it's very clean and spot, that's a good thing to have the rear, so here on the back, you have the port for the heater hose which goes over there basically you're cooling your last cylinder only when you're using the <clears throat> when you're using the heater in your car but you you probably won't use your heater when you're racing and it's when it's already hot enough it's quite simple to fix so and it's much much easier to do it when you get the engine out of the car than when you have everything put inside and there is no much room between the firewall and the engine. Right, 
so that's that inside here you have the thermostat maybe you maybe you'll able to see that yeah and here i'm gonna put a plate to block that but but i think that's gonna be in the another video because i think that's it for the disassemble now i'm gonna start assembling the engine and regasket everything so i think that's gonna be good good place to to stop the, this episode and see you guys in the next one where i'm gonna install the rear out the regasket everything and, and start putting everything together so subscribe like everything you know you know what bye